Okay, this is going to be completely unscripted and kind of a mess, but people have been asking me how I did the Parepa video, so I thought I'd put together a little tutorial. Um, quick blender navigation, middle mouse button to pan the screen around like I'm doing, um, shift with your middle mouse button to move the camera around, you know, like that, as opposed to rotating it, um, scroll wheel to move in and out, um, left click to select things, that's basically it. So what we're going to do here, you know, delete the default cube, that's important. Then we want to do Shift and A, add a plane. We're going to leave that be for the moment. We're going to do Shift A again. First of all, let's hit this X up here so that we're aligned. Actually, let's put it on the Y axis like that. Then we want to add a reference image. You know, just move that so it's roughly symmetrical. Then we can turn down the opacity here so it's easier to see what you're doing. Okay, great. Now you want to grab that plane. Just in edit mode. Drag that over here. Sorry, object mode, edit mode, right. Um, you can press tab to alternate between. Edit mode is like what allows you to uh, actually do things as opposed to just moving the object around. Edit mode is where you do modeling and stuff. Okay, take your plane, go into edit mode, which is with the tab key. Um, go right there. Add your mirror modifier, turn on clipping. And then in edit mode again, which again is the tab key. Um, hit R90 um, X, like that. Then G to move things around on like that. And then G and X will get you just moving on the X axis. So let's bring those in. What we want to do is make sure to use the shift in the middle mouse button to be navigating. That way we stay straight parallel on that axis. And then pressing one, two, and three will alternate you between selection modes. So when we're pressing one, we manipulate individual points like, like this press 2, that gives us, we can manipulate edges, press 3, we are manipulating whole planes. So we are largely going to be working with 2 here because the characters are very square. So let's put this edge like roughly at the top of the character, this one about down here. Then you can tweak that a little with the, you know, GX and then one to move individual points around, that kind of thing. So then what we can do is do control R to make a control R to make a loop cut. You can see we can drag that around and basically what that's going to be is where your character bends in the middle. So let's put that right there. And yeah, I think that's good. So then what we want to do is select this edge, hit shift D to duplicate it. You can see you can put that anywhere and just drag that there. What we want to do now is get that vertex. Again, hit one to go into vertex selection mode, drag that out here and just like trace the outline of your leg. Let's make that not quite a square. So there again, let's shift to select those two vertices, hit F to make a, uh, a line between them. I'm going to do an R to make a loop cut here, just so that's square. So then we can shift select all these and F to create a face, shift select all these, F to create a face, and that's probably a good number of bends for the leg. If you want, you can control R and add another spot for the leg to bend, but I don't think we'll do that. So then what we can do, again, shift D to duplicate, S to scale, um, E to extrude, R to rotate, like that, 2, E, R, and now you have your feet. Um, and let's duplicate this, S, E, R, S. You can see what I'm doing in the corner again. And the arms usually have, I think, two bending points. So let's do that. And again, you can rotate those. And then let's just duplicate this. And again, E to extrude, S to scale, 
Let's just make that roughly the size and shape of the hand. Let's do the same thing. I'm not going to duplicate that, I'm just going to eat extrude for the head. Actually, you know what, I think I will duplicate that since the bottom of the head is so differently sized. So Shift D to duplicate. Just drag that out here. E to extrude. This one is a little asymmetrical, so once we're done with the mirror modifier we can deal with that. This guy has ears. Let's just... Like that. And then give the ears a bending point in the middle, like that. Okay, now what you want to do is go back over here, click that little down arrow, hit apply. Now you can edit all your points. So if you have any asymmetry in your character drawing, you can edit the geometry accordingly to match that, which is what I'm doing right here. Just like, you know. And there, that looks all right, workable as a character model. Now what we want to do is shift A, um, hit armature, single bone, and again any moving of this you want to do that in edit mode, which again is tab, A to select all, G, and then Z to move on the Z axis, and let's go into, you can switch view modes like this um, by pressing Z and this menu will come up, you can hold Z down. We can now see our wireframe, so let's align that with the bending point, and then E to extrude this bit right here, and then just along the Z axis up here. Uh, let's E to extrude again, give him a head bone. Okay, now important in your tab, right here, make sure you have X axis mirror checked. Now what you want to do is Shift E, give him a shoulder bone, Shift E again for each segment of your limb. And then what we can do is select that bone, just delete that. Again, E to extrude for the hand. Grab that. And then do basically the same thing for the, the leg bones. Shift E to extrude symmetrically. E for the top of the leg. Move that around. Again, E. Actually, let's just do that. And then let's give it two foot bones. And right, the ears. So let's just do that. Actually, let's just give him one ear bone. Delete. I forgot to extrude that symmetrically. There we go. Okay, so now you have a skeleton. Hide your image, H to hide. Select first your guy, then your skeleton with the shift key, and again that's left clicking to select, control P. Hit armature deform, and then you see with automatic weights, we want to do that. Okay, so now what we have here, let's go back into solid mode so that you can see all the planes and things. Go into pose mode, you can see our guy now bends. This is good. It's a little bit wonky. You see the head bends when we hit the, the arm bone. We can fix that. I will show you how to fix that in a bit. First though, let's get the character portrait going. And what we want to do for that is go to this, um, go into your UV editing panel. Again, make sure that you've got your axis aligned like this. A to select everything. And then what we want to do is hit F3 and type uh, project. And you want to hit project from view. You can see you now have a little guy over here, just like here. So now what we want to do is image, open, open up your, your image, your same image as before. And just scale, again S to scale, over here, your UVs, until they basically match your image. And... If 
if they don't quite align, you can always edit them manually. And that's probably fine. Okay, so now you have UVs. Make sure you save frequently. Then what we want to do is go to the shading tab up here. You've got your little materials tab down here, this checkered box, click that, hit new, delete this principled BSDF node. Um, what we want to do is shift A to add something, and then we're going to add an image texture. Select your texture that we opened before. Uh, feed that into a mix shader node. Put in the... you can left click and drag to connect these little things. You want your color in here and your alpha into the factor. And then shift A again, and then you want to do transparent, transparent BSDF. Put that in there, and assuming I did this correctly, I have it the wrong way around. And if you want to do that, if you want to uh, deconnect nodes like that, you just control and then drag and right click like that. So you want the color in color on the bottom one, and transparent in the top one like that. And what we're going to do is scroll over here. Um, Go to blend mode, hit alpha clip, just like that, you have little transparent guy. Okay, now what we're gonna do is again select the select your skeleton, shift select the model. Now you have it over here called white paint. We got a solid mode. You can see if you control click on a bone you can see how that bone influences everything. We have a paintbrush over here that will paint higher influence on the bone, so let's make sure our head bone, which we have control selected here, is influencing our ears. Okay, now we can correct the things like the shoulders influencing the head. So turn your weight all the way down to zero, make sure your shoulder bones are not affecting your head, This looks pretty good. We got pretty lucky here. Obviously your mileage may vary with your own model and bones and whatnot, but this looks pretty good. Again, control S to save, do that a lot. Let's look at pose mode, that's much better. You can see our arm is no longer turning the head, it is turning the body a little, so let's just go back into white paint mode. and just remove that weight. Uh, it's still affecting that. Could be a, we have something further down the chain that is affecting. There we go, it was just... and the weights are easier to see as you go into solid mode like that. Okay, perfect. So now you have a little guy. Now we want to go back to shading. Um, let's do another mix shader. Drag this out. And make sure this node, yeah, like that. Just like that, so that it intersects the, the color line here. Now we want to add another image texture. Make that, no, sorry, open. Make that your texture that you have. Make that your texture that you have for the open mouth. So, and 
and then just drag that. And if I hit this button to hide our skeleton, you can see this factor here is going to control your transparency of the open mouth. And it's interpolating linearly as I drag this. We're going to be, when we keyframe that, it's going to be interpolating through a constant value, so you will get that pop in out that you're used to seeing. Right now, let's just leave that at zero. Okay, now animating. We want to go up to the animation tab up here. I'll set that to rendered so we can see a little better. And this is your camera right here. So you can move that around the exact same way you move around everything else. You know, G to move, R to rotate. And normally here there's a little bit of like motion with the camera, so let's start by rotating that around the z-axis. So it's facing like that. And then we're gonna do is hit I. What I does is I inserts a keyframe. You wanna hit location, rotation, and scale. Let's drag that maybe 40 frames out. RZ to rotate again, and I again. So now you can see as time passes, the camera is rotating. Let's drag that out further so it rotates more slowly. Perfect, okay. Now what we're gonna do, hit this, go back into pose mode. First of all, let's pose our little guy so that arms are down a bit, you know, ears flopped a bit. Nothing is ever quite straight up and down in this game. Make him lean a little bit. Something like that, you know. That's a decent first pose. Um, so now, still in pose mode, hit A to select everything. I again, location, rotation, and scale. Now you have a keyframe for all the bones. So now let's, you know, maybe 20 frames out. Lean in the other direction. Head a little bit of trailing behind. Move the foot up a little bit, maybe. You know, just like wiggle it a little bit. This is all very just however you feel. Okay, you got all that. A, I, location, rotation, scale, again. Your little dude now interpolates between those. Um, usually you're going to want, for this particular style, linear interpolation. So you go key here, interpolation mode, linear. Okay, now like 20 frames out again, you can just like copy this, control C, control V. And let's just like scale that a little bit so it goes a little faster. Again, S to scale. Okay, perfect. So this is 14 frames in, and that is 28 frames in. So let's just copy-paste that, another 14 frames and 28. And obviously you're going to be wanting to do this a little more elegantly when you do your thing, and it can help to add some, like, variance in the individual keyframes. You want to edit an individual, just, you know, do some wonkiness with that, and you would just I again to insert the keyframe. Okay, now mouth keyframes. What we want to do is head over to the shading tab again and hit view, area, horizontal split. That's going to give you a tab down here. Drag this up. Go here, go to dope sheet. What we want to do is click this guy. And what we want to do is the shader. We are now going to be inserting keyframes here. So we want to mouse over this, hit I. You can see that turned yellow, that means we have a keyframe there. So let's say maybe 10 frames in, we want the mouth to open. And we hit I again. And then you can see that's going to fade in, but we don't want that. So what we want to do is select those two keyframes, hit key, interpolation mode, constant. We're going to get that nice snappy interpolation now. And then you can just copy those keyframes. You got your open, you got your close, just track where they're at, those little dots on your timeline. And you know, drag and drop as needed. 
kann ich das sagen. And that's basically the principles of the thing. You know, if you want to add a background, just like, you know, mesh plane, scale like your plane, again, S to scale, and just give that you know, your texture the same way that we did with here, you know, just feed an image texture into your material output. Obviously, we don't want shadows on, so I'm just gonna do that right now. Shading. If you don't want to bother with a texture, you can just have your material out, um, have a color, feed it right in like that. You know, let's just make the ground bright pink for no reason. And then we go over here, we can see what the camera is seeing. And you have just like, you know, roughly. 50 frames seems like of animation. And if you want to cut or your frames end, you can just put the end to 50, whatever, and that'll just stop the animation where you said. Um, anything else? Right, adding audio. So if you want to add audio, what we can do drag this up, go to the video sequencer, and add sound, and then just double click your import your sound. Perfect. Okay. And that'll play while you're animating so you can time things correctly. And then to output the video, we want to go to this little icon up here, output direct that to a, a better folder than temp on your C drive, and FFmpeg video. I personally like MP4. You're free to set the encoding to whatever you like. Make sure your output quality is high quality. Uh, H.264 is fine. So then just save that and then you get a render, render animation, and it'll spit out your frames. This will take a bit, when that's done, you'll have a nice video, and then you can edit your text on that, whatever. That's pretty much it, I think. This is where I watch my parents die, Parappa. This is where you watch your parents die. Oops, oops.